Hello, everyone, and welcome to Amazing Plastic Sunday Hangout. I'm your host, Jack Holzer, and today I'm asking, why is the word abbreviation such a long word? Amazing Plastic is a Google Plus community of all scale modelers of all shapes and sizes, interests in genres and skill levels, who like to share their tips and tricks with one another and learn more about their craft. And they also like to celebrate one another's scale, uh, uh, scale modeling achievements. Uh, the, Sunday hangout along, uh, the Sunday Hangout, along with the Across the Pond Hangout for our global friends on Saturdays, is an extension of the Amazing Plastic, the Internet show, uh, of course, scale modeling and all that stuff, whatever. <laughs> and as, the, as of the broadcast, as of right now, Amazing Plastic, the Google Plus community, is three, oh, 833 members strong and still growing. And today we have joining us our members and followers of Amazing Plastic to talk scale modeling and to enjoy some scale modeling camaraderie. From my Google left to right, we start with, hi, Christina. Hello. I think that was me again. The connection cut out again, so I think it was me. It's normally me, guys. We can hear you just talk. Hi. <laughs> What is on your bench? <laughs> I've actually been doing some DIY things. So she's actually. Of, yeah. I'm getting busy. There's now thing. Oh. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. You up. Yes. Okay. I bought a lot of these things. Look at all that. Nice. It looks uh, a lot more organized and neater than my desk or bench. I haven't even built it yet. Okay. Yeah. Tomorrow I will put down the bench top and then hopefully I can start getting back to the Voyager. Yeah. That needs to be done. It's all uh, in there. Okay. <laughs> Next, we have Danny. We haven't seen Danny for a while. How you doing, Danny? I'm doing good, thank you, guys. I've been on several different airlines and flying back and forth to England several times, and I'm sick of it. But now I am back home, not England. I'm actually back here in the States, and I'm loving it. No more planes, no more jet lag, and no more TSA in their damn rubber gloves. <laughs> uh, <yes. laughs> there are only so many places you can hide a, a model kit of a bottle rocket. But anyway... <laughs> um, I'm, I'm doing good, thank you guys, thanks for asking, and on my bench currently, what's literally what was on my bench in the first place is I'm now back to doing a whole bunch of uh, how I paint uh, faces and doing texture blending from skin tones, various skin tones for uh, any uh, figurines or models that have um, people's faces. Um, I know a lot of sci-fi models are usually wearing helmets or things like that, but there are some models that they like, especially military. Um, tank crews, things like that. So I'm going to be doing a huge post for the Amazing Plastic guys with photos on how I do my skin tones, mm -hmm. ranging from Caucasian to African American to Native American. There's going to be a whole bunch of different skin tones, not just white and black, because there were Native Americans in World War II, and various other things like that. So you can also apply it to aliens and things like that. And, and, and uh, I actually have a couple of uh, the Starship Trooper little cockroach bugs that I'll be painting up as well and doing painting for those and stuff. And... Um, it's just for the amazing plastic guys to go check out and things like that. That's what's on my bench right now. Very nice. Uh, and next up we have um, James. James is the paper guy. Yeah. Good evening, Jack. Yeah, well, I'm still plugging away at my ME329. Mm -hmm. Definitely got more skin onto the, uh, onto the wings. Mm -hmm. Got the exhaust cut out. Nice. And I've just started to work on the uh, propeller mounts, which I've got the skins here, but they've got to be trimmed because the skins come pre-sized for the non-engine version. So I've got to cut them back in order to fit for the opening for the uh, for the engine. So mm -hmm. you're scratch building a paper craft kit, pretty much. That's the way it goes, yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just give you the general information on that for that part, and you got to figure the rest of it out in yourself. You seem to have been working on, 
one wing. Uh, are you working on the other wing, or is oh, that? Oh yeah, no, no. I I work on them both at the same time. Which I do is I do one procedure with the one wing, and then I'll move over and do the other one. So uh, the, both wings are in step. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I would think it'd be kind of complicated to go back over the whole procedure the second time. Well, it's e it's actually easier because once you get a a procedure set up to do it one way, actually you you end up doing the second wing plus any uh, corrections that you found with the first one. But it's uh, it's easier to do it right after each other as opposed to sure. doing all yeah. one side and then going back to relearning it again. That way you have fresh scratch. muscle memory. So it's yeah. just, you know, yeah. Okay, and next up we have Jay. How you doing, Jay? Greetings, Model Minions. I am doing fantastic today. I uh, did a bunch more work. Yesterday I showed the very basic of the uh, the uh, Tom Corbett Polaris model I'm building. I added, I added the uh, heat radiators, put all four fins on, mm -hmm. and now they are obviously covered with putty because I need to make this really super smooth because this is going to be uh, hit with all clad chrome when it's finished. So I need it as smooth as possible. If you're going to use all clads, you need that paint as smooth as you can because all clads will show the tiniest little marks. What did you make the radiator fins out of? These are uh, they're two. Uh, it's, these are actually two layered. Uh, they're what is that? It's it's a textured plastic that I believe is supposed to be like like uh, corrugated flooring. Mm -hmm. it, looks like, it, it, looks, it looks like it's wicked, like it's weaved. Yeah, if I can get that's it. That's what threw me off. Yeah. Oh, it's like a little di It looks like diamond plate. Okay. Yeah, diamond plate. That's it. And yeah. then the edges, the edges are. I just took a, uh, took some of the uh, uh, textured plastic that that has you know the long grooves in it, and I just cut off the end of it. Cut it off. Cut off the end so that I would be able to make some uh, textured strips. Nicely I've also done. been working on the. It's released nowadays as the Mars Lander, but this was the uh, Disney TWA Moon Lander. Mm -hmm. They can't call it that anymore. <laughs> Why not? Why? <laughs> because nor because it it normally has uh, the TWA logo on it, and it says Moon Lander down at the bottom. TWA Moon Lander. However, the model sheet, the the decal sheet they give you, they they've called it the fast way. They called it the Fastway um, Mars Lander, and if you just cut away, uh, see if I can do this here without being a complete idiot. Yeah. Oh, okay, get it in there. Cover yeah, that. That's hidden in the name. Yeah. TWA. Yes. Yeah. yeah. TWA right there. That's that is that's... that is the font for TWA. That is the font. And down on this this part over here, we have. Rocket liner, moon beam. Cut off the beam from that and the liner there, and you've got moon liner. Uh, so <laughs> they're, they're being sneaky to give you the decals to do Scratch it. Scratch building with decals. <laughs> nice. Decals. I think that's kind of cute. So, uh, that's, well, that's you know, well, you know, those rockets are from um, concept rockets. It's from ages ago, and of course, TWA was ages ago, too. So, oh, yeah. Very fitting. Very fitting. Hi, Otto. What's up? What's going on with you? Uh, not a whole lot. Just uh, another wonderful day in paradise. Um, Living the dream, eh? It's more of a nightmare out here. Um, on my bench right now, i got a computer, i got a lava lamp, and i got one of these. And what is one of those? The Frisbee. Oh. The 18. <laughs> yeah, Frisbee. Yep. Uh, the I, I thought about actually using it as that. Mm -hmm. He got it from me. Yep. Yes, yep. it is a miniature Enterprise. Mm -hmm. It's a it's the 18 inch Enterprise, is what it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like I said, um, I've got some ideas for this. I'm gonna go totally off the wall with it. Um, anybody who truly knows me, I'm the one of few people that actually has a black X-wing. Mm -hmm. um, this is gonna get. I, I'm gonna try and dull coat it. In like a uh, steel or black-ish color. I'm going to try and mix the two and dull coat it that way. Make it a little darker than your average white one. Mm -hmm. 
so he's, going kinda... the, uh, he's going with the Dreadnought color scheme from JJ's Enterprise. Something like that. I just something you know, something you don't see every day. Mm-hmm. No, so. I don't see. Um, I don't. I don't uh, okay. I was. I'm sorry. I, I'm uh, lining up the next uh, point of discussion right now, and uh, of course, uh, are, you, are you done there, um, Otto? Yeah, that's pretty much covers my basis. So, well, Jack, it says yes. that it says that Heath showed up, but I haven't heard him yet. Oh, my yeah. video is not working. Oh, video is not working. From behind that car. Hi, Heath. Hi, Jack. How are we all today? Uh, we are fine. I'm pissed off at my camera. I don't know what the hell's going on. It worked Saturday, and now she's not working at all. Hmm. I guess that's what you're working on on your bench right now is the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes and no. Oh, okay. Every now and again, why don't you grunt so we know you're alive over there in Australia, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm working on the um, Reliant, the original Pop Reliant. Nice. And um, I'm going to make this the USS Miranda NCC 1800. Um, I'm going to find find a way to get the uh, decals, but uh, um, I'm making mine into the Saratoga, which was Cisco's ship. Anyway, and this won't have the roll bar on it. Mm-hmm. And I know Don's Light and Magic does sell the uh, nameplates sets, the decal sets. Oh, really? Yes. Because I'm, I'm, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be. I was going to say, I'm, I'm it's just, I'm going to be ordering my uh, Saratoga NCC registry and whatnot for my Miranda that's sitting on the shelf. Uh, Lantry, and I think the Miranda, uh, Miranda is not even an official um, ship. I yeah. thought the first one of its kind of this of the uh, of the uh, class was called the name, like the Miranda class, USS mm-hmm. Miranda. But apparently, in canon, there's no such thing. No. Uh, but I always thought there was, and I knew that the Lantry, USS Lantry, doesn't have the roll bar. All the others do. Um, but this will be interesting to build without the uh, roll bar. And uh, today I was just doing, I'm doing a lot of modifications to it. And then I broke down today and uh, ordered the uh, photo etch because I think I'm going to need it to do certain things. And uh, up uh, looking at the community and everything, and I found a lot of cool stuff uh, a lot of people are building. And I'm sorry if I'm murdering your name, Mr. Jones, but Rudy Jones uh, is building this. Uh, SEAL mission support craft. It looks actually quite large. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would imagine it's uh, radio controlled RC, but even if it isn't, I just think it's fantastic work. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. The rigging on the outside is probably going to be the was probably the hardest part of that kit because I know that the 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 rigging line is all one piece. You can't cut it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, again, people who specialize in just ship buildings, uh, Phil, Amazing Plastic, he's one of them. Um, Christina, she's built several ships. My hat goes off to you guys. I just don't have the patience to do sort of that. Well, uh, imagine, Christina, if your fishing boat was this size, how big of a model the uh, bird of prey would be, because you're, you're building that scene out of uh, Voyage Home where the. Yeah. Thing on bird of prey appears over the uh, fishing boat. No, the harpoon boat, isn't it? Yeah, the one little yeah. fishing yeah. boat that I need yeah. to redo on as it broke, of course. It's tiny. Mm-hmm. Uh, hold, that, hold that up again. Yeah, it's pretty tiny. It's, it's nicely done, man. It is a very yeah. nicely done ship. It is, and from what I understand, it is correct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's just not something that's uh, put something I would do, just. Put one together, make it look like a boat, and it's good for me. <laughs> and also, Mr. Jones is uh, doing the Predator. Mm-hmm. Um, very nice work. Very yep. nice work. So he's uh, a multi-dimensioned uh, model himself. Have you guys ever uh, built one of these um, figures I've like that? Built, 
I've never built the Predator. I've built figures that size before. Yeah, I, I've, I've, again, I've never done the Predator itself. I've done T-800s from Terminator. I've done aliens from the, the, the aliens with the tail from the movie. I've yeah. even done an alien queen, and the head alone was a large chunk of resin, and it was a hard freaking task to get that little bony neck because, I mean, big, they, big, huge head, tiny little neck. It was really they, hard. I had to put... It, did they cast it solid? Yeah, they cast it solid. Oh, and I had to put eight or nine steel pins into the neck just to get the neck to sit properly on the torso. And mm-hmm. it was still overbalanced for a while. Yeah, that's, and, that's, that's the time you hollow cast something. When you yeah, have, it's that old roto cast. Yeah, or something like that. Uh, I mean, the kit was an old garage kit from the 90s, and so I couldn't complain. That I, got, I got the kit a car boot sale for like £2.50, oh, okay. so I really couldn't complain. And I mean, when I looked up the price for the kit, it was about, about, it was about 80 to £90 pounds when it first came out, so I got a, a huge discount, yeah. so I wasn't complaining. So yeah, I, I have built figurines at that scale. Well, there is uh, other model kits that yeah, I went to the raw for. <laughs> something that I built as a kid, and uh, there were two kinds of cars I really liked building. That were dragsters and funny cars. And uh, really, quite frankly, funny cars are really hard to find. And even if you do find them, they're horribly expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, John McCaslin here is uh, showing off uh, his build of a funny car. I don't know. I think it's the – I don't know whose it is. Uh, but I just really like looking at this thing. <laughs> I can't remember whose it was. I remember seeing the car ages it's ago. Keith Back, it's Keith Backler's uh, uh, okay. 70 Boss Mustang, funny Boss yeah. Mustang. Uh huh. I, I've had to build several of those shells for other people who wanted to build funny, funny car funny Mustangs. Person. When I was working with from a boss up in Salt Lake, doing bodies. That's what I used to build. I used to build those funny car bodies, so I know exactly what goes into them. Yeah. I, I remember building them. I was probably about seven, eight years old, and I just had, and never got painted, of course, but I just remember having a ball, putting it together and propping it up like that with the decals and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really, really, he's brought brought it back for me, and I'm like, you know what? I, I gotta get one of these. It's just one. It doesn't matter which uh, one. It is. I believe round two. I think it's round two. They have a whole bunch of funny car model kits in stock. I was going to say, I know MPC carries a lot. I know one of the big ones. I've actually got it. Um, I'm working on it right now, kind of in this side project, is the old school Chi-Town Hustler Dodge Mm -hmm. Charger. Yep. Um, Um, And and I I know they've got Hemi Under Glass, which was a uh, a drag car that used to pop wheelies going going down the strip. I know you can get a funny car model kit set of that at round two, I believe. I think it's like $19. At round two, mm-hmm. which isn't bad if you want to try and turn that into a funny car. Now, mind you, I'm going on to uh, members of Amazing Plastics uh, site on Google Plus uh, to show you these pictures. So I'm telling everybody watching that you can go to the community, and if you like something, just go onto their page. You'll find a whole bunch of other things uh, to look at that they've done. And one of my favorite car builders is actually uh, Nick Ambergy. I'm probably mm-hmm. one, I'm, I'm a good fan of his. Yep. And he just puts a, a lot of detail into his work. And yeah, Nick, here he's Nick's got the uh, distributor cables. Mm-hmm. Danny, I think yeah. you could speak more to this. Yeah, um, Nick's, Nick's a really good modeler. I've actually spoken to him in a couple of Hangouts. He's really cool. Um, yeah, that's the uh, Corvette 527, uh, five, uh, 522 that he's... Right. 572 that he's putting into a uh, uh, monster truck. I think it's a monster truck. I'm not sure if it's the monster truck or if it's going to be another car he's doing. He he always does multiple car kits at the same time, and um, he he him and another member James are uh, doing their own pulleys James and, and yeah James, James out who's doing his own pulleys and and custom rims and even distributor caps and that for car models and stuff like that. So. Yeah, uh, they talk about us sci-fi guys going crazy about these uh, uh, starships. But quite frankly, he does. Uh, uh, you know, car modelers do just the same. You know, oh yeah, a lot of work. Oh yeah. Uh, so do so do so do us military guys. Don't get us wrong. Us military guys, we 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 got to have the right camouflage with the right this, that, and the other. And we get upset when they don't give us the right decals, and we have to go off the market and. 
and then the tracks don't look right, so we have to start fiddling around with the track to make it look right. On oh, trust me, been there, done that. It's pain, pain <laughs> in the bum. Uh huh. Um, well, I haven't seen too much armor. It's actually kind of funny as I keep. I look at the Google Plus community every day without fail. Uh, mm-hmm. If it's just two minutes or two hours, I look at it every day and see what's going on, who posted what. And uh, quite frankly, I can't recall seeing any, you know, um, armor as of late. However, several months ago, there was a lot of it. Y- you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of airplanes. And uh, right now, it's a lot of sci-fi. It's just actually quite interesting how people post and... and it's how- like certain kits, it's like certain genres go through their seasons. Um, yeah. b- because... To, for me, I build pre- preliminary vehicle tanks and things, but I do also have a lot of sci-fi. And I only tend to do my sci-fi during the winter when I don't have to worry about the paint because the, you can just use regular, you know, uh, uh, Walmart, LGP, Rust-Oleum primer. But if you're using Vallejo primer or something on a model, t- on a military vehicle, you, you're taken to an IPS show or something, you want that to shine. And as far as I know, every time I've gone to an IPS, IPMS tournament, it's always been a military vehicle that's won it. It's never been a sci-fi. For some reason, it's just sci-fi does not win in IPMS. Um, look at, uh, um, oh, God, Lou, Lou, look at Lou Damasio. He went to a local IPMS tournament. He took his Kirk and his Spock that was professionally cast by uh, Steve Neal he painted them, and and they were a beautiful paint job, and they didn't even make it into the top ten. Yeah, uh, I think he I think he said he got like seventeenth overall, which is kind of pretty much you're in the bargain bin, sort of thing, you know. Well, and, you know, you know, quite frankly, sci sci fi and has this reputation. It's not real. You can't compare it to anything. Yeah. And, and see, that's well, the thing. That's a, that's a matter of opinion. I know, because to some it is real, you know. Like yourself, Jack. Oh, yeah, but I build all kinds of things cause just because I like plastic. And it's not just um, I, I have, and I still have yet to do my boats, my my armor. But I, I'm getting there, you know. Mm-hmm. In time, I'm getting there. I, 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 I am biased towards sci-fi, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't like restricting myself. But well, no, it's, it, it's not more so you're restricting yourself. It's about it's just certain model kits you you tend to want to build around certain seasons where it's getting summer and it's quite hot. To build a tank, if you really want to really push it through, you can do it in maybe a day. If you're not really interested in partying and weathering and things like that, you can usually knock out a tank model kit in in just built the, the thing you know right out the box in about 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. As where with a sci-fi, when you're gluing the saucer section, you've got a clamp pit, you've got to make sure it sits right, or otherwise it's going to look like a wonky hump cap. And and you know you've got to put more time and energy and effort into certain kits of certain genres than you do in others. Mm-hmm. And so it, it shows when it comes to cars, some people just want to slap the engine together and just glue the hood down because you're never going to see the bloody engine if you if the hood's glued down. You know, and, and you can knock out a car in anywhere between 15 to 20, much like a tank. But again, when it comes to sci-fi and you're doing a huge you know, Babylon 5 or an Enterprise or e- even a, a, a sea view from the voyage to the bottom of the sea, you know, you've got to take your time because those kits are rather large. The larger the kit, the longer the time it takes. I agree because, you know, yeah, the, the Star and, and do take a long time. Exactly. I'm getting a lot of cars in the wintertime. You're, you're, you're right. And yeah, it's, it, it's all seasonal. You know, it's all seasonal with certain, certain model kit builders. It's just seasonal. I am, I am screen sharing a car mm-hmm. uh, that was taken in a showroom. Mm-hmm. The showroom is a diorama. Yeah, mm-hmm. I see this one. Uh, Alex uh, does a phenomenal job, and he's uh, posted pictures of this as he was building it. Mm-hmm. It's a Mercedes, isn't it? It's, it's a Mercedes. Uh, yeah, it's an uh, SLS. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. I like the fact that he's got the, the leather detail almost yeah. right. You know, it feels like if yeah. you put your hand in there, you're going to feel leather, you know? Well, and, and then the lighting and everything's true. Yeah, yeah and it, it is nicely done. It's just I really don't like that green. Oh, I'm I love like the green. <laughs> I, I kind of like it. If, it, if, the, wife, if, if the wife bought me that... The if, the wife, if the wife bought me that car in real life and it was that green, I'd immediately go to my local Ace and get some rattle cans and yeah, it won't be green for long. <laughs> that poison green. It's a froggy car. 
<laughs> it just green is not my favorite color. I just yeah. not find green. I happen to oh, like green. It, and it just these pictures. Look, this looks like a real car, actually. Yeah, I, I like the way that he's got the nice. He's used a matte varnish on the glass and a gloss varnish on the body, and that's what's giving it that right light reflection. You know. And, Reminds and me like the old school AMC Javelin or something. You know, you don't see that color that much anymore. Well, it's not that. It's just the, the detail that he's paid attention to the model kit. It looks itself. like Ford Signal Green. Yeah. He's, he's paid a lot of... I mean, love the doors. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. He wins. has paid a lot of attention to detail when it comes to that kit. You know, but then again, the kit itself is highly detailed as well. The 124 yeah. from Rebel. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's Rebel. Yeah, it's Rebel. Mm. Re Rebel yeah, that's a Rebel. Their cars right? are very highly detailed. They are Rebel? very highly detailed. Oh, no, okay, so it's... The Rebel the Germany kits are just mm -hmm. completely different to the yeah. rest of them. Yeah, and, and it, it is, a, again, it's a beautiful car, it's a beautiful kit, it's nicely built. Um, if it was in an IPMS show, I, I, I would wager it'd probably be in the top ten. I will I'll say what, tops with me. We have more shirts over here. Uh, <laughs> we have more shirts over here. Um, Just going back to the um, thing we were talking about before. I'm going to try to bring up uh, Aries, uh, one of our members from Canada. Oh, Mike just, hey, Mike just popped in. Mike Morgan. Yeah, hey, Mike. Mike. Good. Hi, how's it going? Good, thank you. Welcome to the Hangout. Hi, Mike, and it's, he's working his way in there. Uh, but um, the reason I'm bringing up Aries is that he, I saw something. I don't know if I can find it. Uh, yes, uh, he's taking part. A lot of the other car uh, builders are taking part in a Paul Walker Fast and Furious tribute build. And yeah, I've seen that one. That should be very interesting. That should be very interesting. And actually, I'm actually considering it, but I have no idea what kind of cars were in those movies. So I don't have to do that. Have you ever about that? You have, you brought Nissans, that about? It mostly Nissans, Toyotas. It's mostly imports, rice grinders, as well, we call that would them. Be, well, that will be simply Tamiya kits. Yeah. So you're looking at, yeah, see right there what Otto's got. That I was, was going to say right movie. there she is. Yeah, that's the first movie. movie. It's been many a years ago. That's a Supra. That yeah. is my Toyota Supra right off. Minus the, I didn't do my, if you look, I don't have the uh, fan spoiler. on it. The spoiler, yeah. But, mm -hmm. yeah, that is my, and that's been two years ago I did that one. With, if you look, if you look in the movie, that is the authentic license plate they put on it. I don't know if it shows. It won't. Too so much light reflecting. Yeah, but I've got the authentic license plate from California um, on that Supra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in Fast and the Furious, it's mostly all imports except for the one charger, which the is charger. the main one. And in the, in, the, in the newest film, there was a Jensen Interceptor and the Ford Escort Mark One. Yeah, which got destroyed. Yeah, they destroyed seven of them. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I know. It's sacrilege. Although and when you do the actual shells, they were all rotten, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody knows, like, but Jack disappeared. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like we lost Jack for a minute. There he goes, he's ah, back. There he goes. Ah, back. So I don't know if we're still on air or not, but... Yeah, we yes, are. we are. Yeah, we are. And, and so, you know, when it comes to Fast and the Furious, it's just mostly in, mostly imports, with the occasional one or two rare cars thrown yeah. in. Um, I mean, I know they're thrown in a Ferrari here and there and a Porsche here and there, but it's mostly yeah. just imports. So you're looking at Nissan, Toyota, uh, Acura, Super. You know, you you're looking at mostly imports. Yeah. Uh, uh, Scions even, and, and, and so I know in the last one they had a couple of Scions in there as yeah, well. The Tokyo Drift had the Scion that was decked out like the uh, Incredible Hulk. Yeah, that was a yeah the Scion minivan. Yeah, they it's mostly all rice grinders and imports. I see. Okay, well. That I did. The, I had somebody at work who commissioned me, and I built a '91 Honda Prelude. I shared pictures on the community, mm -hmm. so you could actually buy that kit again and just give it a really wacky out there yeah. paint job, and boom. You. you know, there you go. It wasn't cheap. It was like uh, forty dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually thinking about doing the a uh, doing a Nissan Skyline GTR as. Uh, he ended up having in the second and third movies, kind of. The blue one? Yeah, the silver and blue. 
But yeah. I don't want to do mine silver and blue. I'd like to do like black and silver. Just Why give it an offset different, different, you know. Yep. Everyone's gone yeah. silent. No, it's Otto. He's uh, probably had his internet bump again. But uh, no, with the Fast and the Furious builds jackets, just mostly imports. Um, the, the, the only time they ever have anything muscle car wise, it's the char uh, 69 Charger, I believe, and it belongs to the main the main main guy. That would be no. It wouldn't have been uh, Paul Walker. It would have been Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. Yeah. Seventy Charger, wasn't it? No, it's a 69. I swear, it's a, I swear it's a 69, not a 70. 69, 70, it's one of those. It's, it's one of those era chargers with a great big Wayland supercharger. 70, yeah, with a Wayland supercharger sticking out the front of it. So, yeah. Well, and, well, and, well, and, well basically, on the Fast and Furious team, you could pretty much do anything as long as it's, like, modified. Yeah, modified with a wacky out-there paint job and... and <laughs> Spinner rims and a neon underglow and, and oh that would be cool. That would be actually see that cool. would be a nice nice little uh, uh, lighting kit that Tenet Controls could put out. Oh, a little, <laughs> little neon underglow kit you could easily put that on a on a station wagon or something. You could do that with the L wire. Yeah. On yeah, on -wire. You could use the L wire. That would be really cool. Yeah, <laughs> Never thought of that before. L wire. There you go. Hey, something new every day. <laughs> There is another kind of model I want to build, and that would be a biplane. Biplanes, nice. And Andrew, a uh, big plane guy. That is a British. That is a British swordfish. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, isn't it bad? I can just tell by looking at it. It's a British swordfish. Oh yeah. <laughs> but the, the bullseye. I, that's what I don't never understood why the British adopted the bullseye. Uh, for a uh, logo, we uh, Americans had the star, and you guys had the bullseye. I, I actually, that's called this. that's called the Randall. That's called the Randall Shield, <laughs> and it, it was originally first put on a British plane or an RAF plane to take the piss out the French because the French have one very similar, but the French circle, the dot in the center, is bigger. And, and the RAF first put it on one of their planes to take the piss out of a French uh, out of the one of the French commanders in World War One, and it just stuck after that. Apparently well, that's no offense, no offense, but I think French planes should have a bullseye on them, but not. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Get it right. Their planes have a bullseye on them, and their tanks have more gears for reverse than forward. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> Just like their cars. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? Let's All bring right. you in the conversation. All right. How are you? Good, um, Mike. Very well, thanks. Um, what you doing? What you working on? Oh, just trying to be nice. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Star Destroyer. Did I just see a Star Destroyer? My Sorry. eyes do not deceive me. I saw a Star Destroyer. Oh, no. oh it's an X-Wing. Ah. X-Wing fighter. I did uh, Blue Leader. Used the... Uh, What's his name? Lou's. What is that? Lou Damasio. Yeah, whatever the the, the maskings. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I still got one more to do, and I've been kind of crazy around here for the last couple of days, and I didn't have kind of jumped on it. I'm feeling well plus that, and I still. Is got that it. the AMC kit? Yeah, AMT. Yeah. yeah. It's the AMT kit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I still got to put that masking down here. It's been everything's weatherized. I wanted to do something, and I watched a bunch of videos, and I didn't realize that you could do it with enamel. Is the hairspray technique? Yes. Every video I said, they kept saying acrylic, acrylic, acrylic. So no, it works I, with it works so with I, virtually anything. You want to know what works even better than the hairspray technique, and it's easier to use? This is what I do. This is uh, a one dollar bottle or jar of styling gel. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was going to say styling gel. Yeah, you can paint this on where you want it with a paintbrush instead of... I was of when, when, funny about it. I wasn't being serious. Yeah, <laughs> but it is. It's, uh, it's styling gel, and you paint this on where you want uh, the paint to chip and things like that. The nice thing 
when doing rust effects, the nice thing about this stuff is it adds thickness mm -hmm. if you want it to. Because a lot of times when a car rusts, it bubbles up. Yeah, it, it doesn't it, it, just go paint and then rust. It bubbles up, and and uh, you can recreate that with the styling gel. I know, I know Dr. Cranky likes to use styling gels when he does rust on his vehicles and that. I also uh, been trying to add a little bit more color here and there, and I did uh, the rings on the on the laser cannon gold, or actually it's 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 a uh, yellow testers yellow. That's what I want to call it. It's am oh turn signal amber. Oh yeah, um, turn signal amber. Yeah. Actually, it was on a gray uh, primer, so I don't know. It turned it kind of gold looking with. That's what I wanted, anyways, and I uh, kind of weathered it up pretty nice. And uh, what I'm so going to do kind of looks like a dirty brass. Mm -hmm. yes. And so what I want to do with the lasers barrels is I want to wrap them in bare metal foil right here and do that in the same kind of gold that is. And if I'm not mistaken, that little rim behind there is red. If I'm not mistaken, there there was white. there were stripe bands there were stripe bands behind the cannons to represent the leader numbers. So if it was red five, there'd be five stripes. If it was oh, red two, okay. there'd be two stripes. Yeah. Oh. If memory serves, I'll have to double check. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I'm going to be building an X-wing. I've got two of those uh, uh, AM AMT X-wings, and uh, I want to build one. But do it up with lots of uh, mud and sea and, and 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 plant life and seaweed and do it as uh, as Stacy's uh, X-wing from the Pink Five series. Oh, the Dagobah, <laughs> the Dagobah series. Yeah. I was actually thinking about doing one and leaving it in a swamp. You know how Luke crashed his uh -huh. on Dagobah, and actually yeah. do it as a diorama where you've got it half in, half out, and then have a little Yoda figurine and a little Luke figurine. You know. Mm -hmm. And have R2's little snorkel thing sticking up out the water. <laughs> you know? And the little Batmobile. Oh, ah, talking about Batmobiles. The nice. Snap tight, or the, it's not snap tight. Why did I say that for me? Ridiculous. Um, the polar light snap kit. Okay, the polar lights. My, I've been wanting to work with clears. I've been wanting to try to work with clears and try to, you know, uh, try to understand them a little, grasp them a little harder and Actually, what, what really dug it in, and not to be crazy, but I saw your uh, Trans Am, Christine, and I was like, man, I want to dig in the, the decals. I said, man, I want to grab some decals, you know? And I thought, I got this, I might as well do it. So there's about, what is it, six coats of acrylic uh, clear on there and pledge. Uh, about two coats of pledge polished in every other coat. Wet sand and polish. And that's how mm -hmm. I got this. Got that, that shiny. It's well, and it's kind of ironic that you mention uh, Christina's Trans Am. I reach over here. Yes, oh, yes. Nice. You have, you have a yep, Trans yep. Am. Actually, two of them. <laughs> Turn one of them into the Batmobile. There you go. Now Batman's a real redneck. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little Batmobile. That is not going to be it. No, my, we we were discussing about potentially doing a uh, uh, Batmobile group Just build, a, uh, Batmobile. Where, where we all do our own prototype versions of what we think the Batmobile should look like. I think that would be fun. Yeah, I I, I want to. I I can't wait because again, I'm I'm probably going to do I'm I'm probably going to do a Batman. And a Joker mobile. I'm gonna do take that little that Lincoln Mark V I've got somewhere, and turn it into Joker's Joker's car. I, I think that what I would probably do in light of the recent um, how should I say goings on in this country, how about a Batmobile with a just married sign with the rattle cans in the back? <laughs> as long use as you your make, imagination, Batman. <laughs> as long as you don't use a GM car, you should be good. Hey, I, 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 I was actually think of an AMC, like yeah. an AMC Pacer or something, you know? Yeah, there you go. You could use that Mustang kit I gave you as use well. That yeah, that Mark III is a goddamn Batmobile. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah, that Mark III. 
So, so Batman's Batman's upgrading in my mind, in my book. No <laughs> more Chevys. No I'm more just Chevys. not a Batman fan. I'm sorry, guys. You know, I'm sorry, everybody out there, but I'm just not the Batman fan. Nobody says you have to be a Batman fan, Jack. So I you, mean, you don't like a masked stranger wearing a skin tight leather. Well, yeah. maybe. You gotta but, look at how many versions yeah. of Batman there was. Hell yeah. of a I mean, you know, 1944, and look at Batman then. You know, with Scooter Baker with that big giant gnarly fin on the shark fin on the top of it, and, mm -hmm. and how campy, loose fitting costume he <laughs> had. Like pajamas, black pajamas, basically. And Adam West. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Adam West. That hung down. He had cuffs that hung down, and we're not even tight fit. I was like, yep. what is it? Pajamas, black pajamas. And, and so that that's what I, I was I was gonna pitch to the rest of the community is if they were interested in doing a uh, prototype Batmobile uh, build yeah. community build where we all build our own version, but. Again, 50% of the kit has to be scratch built, and most importantly, you have to list the kits that you used in case someone else wants to, in case someone else wants to make another one of what you did, you know? And see, that's my only problem with it, because if I do my bigger one like I'm notorious for, um, out of RC parts and stuff, I'm not going to have a kit to go off of. <laughs> it's a custom one-off, what can I say, you know? But that that's my idea, in case other people who want to join the, the group build can also you know, you know, build what's, along. What's interesting is in the 1940s Batman serials, um, Batman, the Batmobile was just Bruce Wayne's uh, convertible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He drove around in. One of the characters even, even asked Batman, does Bruce Wayne know you're using his car? So... <laughs> Well, I was thinking uh, of doing the. I, I want to do a group build too, and I think Mad Max is a good uh, a good one because I mean, it's basically really it doesn't have to look pristine. It has to be imaginative. That's all it has to be. And I saw this on Skyline. Mm -hmm. I know those Asura models are crap for the price that they are. Man, that thing is a piece of crap. I, I, I was the biggest disappointment buy I've ever had in my entire life. I almost threw it in the garbage when I opened it up. What's was, that? Well, for one, when you open it up, there is, it's basically a solid car. There's The side window is open. The windshield is solid. Um, there's the, the interior is like, looks. I don't know what that's about. You know, there's no extra doodads or this or that. And the, they sell a hood for it, but it goes to nowhere. It has that, that the blower sticking out of it, and it's like, that is just, it's like, oh, my God. And I bought it from Hobby Lobby. It was like $60 at Hobby Lobby. Ouch. I was so mad when I got home and opened that up. I was like, I give it to my younger brother. I was like, here, he, we, we're both in the models. Do you, uh, hey, Mike, do you have a smartphone? Yeah. Well, next time you go uh, on the on your phone, go to the internet and look up the daily coupon. It's forty percent off at Hobby Lobby. Yeah. If you only buy one item, it's not your whole. It's not your whole sale. It's not your whole everything you buy. It's just on one item. And in fact, I'm going to get some uh, silicone and resin uh, casting kit, which is like eighty dollars or yeah. seventy dollars or something like mm -hmm. that. And I'm going to pick it up for like forty bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, they have a new coupon every week, but but you can just print off the same coupon and use it every day when you go in. Yeah, yeah. so what you do is you, you go there, uh, you buy something, you take it out to your car, put it in a trunk, walk back in, buy another thing, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was back before the smart... This was in, was it, about eight years ago when that first came out. Oshiro, I think that's the name of the... Oshiro, I can never say that Japanese name. Oshiro, I, I can't I can't say Japanese <laughs> name. Sorry. But it was Oswego, isn't it Oswego? I couldn't tell you, but it, but I know it was fifty dollars, and I got home, and I was very disappointed and very mad. <laughs> That's the only thing I got to say. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two. There's like that body undercarriage. It's solid. Set of rims. There was only one screw of parts on it, besides the body and the bottom. It's like oh my. <laughs> Like, oh, 
con me into buying this. <laughs> well, there is something I'd like to bring up, and our friend Neil Wooding from the UK uh, has started a, I don't know, he's making model kits. He's making resin model kits, and he, they created a new world. Uh, his, the company is called Wild House uh, Models. And they created a new world to get away from any copyright laws. That's what he said. I thought it was kind of uh, funny. And he just recently got the box art uh, set up for his uh, stasis pod. It's a sci-fi world that they created. Um, sure it is. <laughs> I can't remember what exactly uh, the world that they created is. But they are planning their next, uh, and I'm screen sharing, their next resin model kit. This is a medical console. Oh, Hostile Realms. Uh, it's a medical console, and they got some nice uh, mock-up pictures here for it. And I'm sure those screens are going to have some uh, interesting graphics in them, probably something on a gel, uh, whatnot. But, uh, yep, uh, medical console is the next thing that they're going to be putting together for their stasis pod. Can hardly wait till they get to the real ships. That would be actually pretty awesome. So I just thought I'd uh, throw that out there. And have you guys um, been keeping up with uh, Wild House? I've been keeping up with some of their posts whenever I can, but we've been traveling so much. I haven't been able to see this one that they just put out, the uh, new medical console. But I did. I did take a quick uh, sneak peek at what they had for uh, their their uh, pod, their stasis pod. Um, I, I only have one thing when it concerns the stasis pod. It's more of a, of a gripe than anything. Is there's no figure to go inside the stasis pod. You know, um, I think it would be cool if they came, if it had a, like a male or a female figurine that could go in the stasis pod too. You know, mm -hmm. that way it gives it a little bit more realism. Sure. But uh, you know, well, again, he he sent me the uh, kit. Uh, I'm starting to do a review on it, and it's such an extensive kit. I want to do a uh, good job of doing a review. And I'll tell you what, I, I have seen resin kits. Uh, this particular kit does not have a single bubble in it. And uh, here you go. I just put the two halves together. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he also has a Arduino lighting kit for this. Apparently... There's some fancy uh, flashing um, going on in the stasis pod. Mm -hmm. So this is the base. But you see what I'm saying? I mean, that center section that's wide open right there is perfect for maybe a three or four inch figure to go in there. I you would know? say a three inch. Yeah, definitely a three inch just, figure. Just, just out of spite, I'd probably put my Han Solo in carbonite in there. <laughs> just out of spite, you know. <laughs> yeah, the only the yeah. only problem the only problem area in that kit is uh, the the seam in the very front, and that's real easy to take care of. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing a screen share. I didn't do it. The I didn't click onto my image here. So anybody watching, uh, I'm just showing off. Do you see those holes on the side there? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of components that get attached to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, like I said, I just like put these pieces uh, together. And uh, also, also, if you drilled all the way through, you could also use them for, to route LED wires and things like that. And stuff. right, but there's uh, one thing I know for sure: there's going to be some puttying going on with this thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, the fit is awesome, but of course, uh, there's a lot of gapping that needs to be done. Like, like with all resin kits, there's all, like with all model kits. Know, what are talking the day, about? <laughs> the, the day I ever get a resin kit where I don't have to use putty, I swear I'll kill over and have a heart attack. Well, most most uh, most uh, styrene kits, you use putty. Size yeah. high, uh, need a lot of put in. Yeah, the thing with the resin kits, you really need to wash the heck out of them. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the, the mold release, the mold release, mold release will will uh, yeah, it'll, it'll cause problems when painting, and it'll uh, cause problems when you try to uh, putty it. So yeah, I I often soak mine for two days. Yeah, I, I soak mine in in uh, in a uh, degreasing fluid. Oh, really? Yeah. It's actually used for uh, it's an automobile uh, uh, bright t bright tire. It's a degreasing and cleaning fluid for tires. Oh. 
Okay. Not purple I mean, pond. I soak it. No, not no. purple pond, although that would okay. probably work. I just soak it in that. Yeah. And rinse them off and then go over them with soap and water. Yeah. I I just use a mixture of soap and water and uh, this uh, and um, well believe it or not Coke. I take a can of Coke, pour the can of Coke in there with a little bit of uh, washing this dishwasher detergent, mm -hmm. soak and just soak them for two maybe three days. When they're done, come out scrubbing brush, just scrub away and boom, nice and clean. Huh. Well, uh, there is one other thing that I have done a video on, and I think I will turn it on. It makes an awful lot of noise. And it's my Goodyear blimp. Yep. <laughs> and there we go, my Goodyear blimp. Thing. Shameless advertising. Yep. Hey, whatever works, man. <laughs> Jack, Jack, did, I tell, you, did I tell you about my experience with that model? What's that? I had that model when it came out many years ago. And, uh, 1975. Yeah, the, the Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, had not hit theaters in the area yet, but I bought the novel. And I was reading the novel, I was home alone, and I was reading the novel and I had just gotten to the part, I went upstairs to use the bathroom, and I had just gotten to the part where the little kid is, uh, you know, waking up and all of his toys are turning on. And oh, I came downstairs and the Goodyear blimp was running. Oh, uh, God. I never touched it. <laughs> <laughs> I never touched it, but I'll tell you. Yeah, that, that makes that makes you makes you a little worried, you know. <laughs> I, I I would love that as a car horn, just to roll around a suburban area late one night, you know, just to freak people out. <laughs> well, but I mean, you, Danny, you can just turn around or lean to the side, one of the one to the left or right, and pick something up and show it on camera. Why don't you do that? Uh, okay. <laughs> Dang, I actually don't. Ah, yes, I do. Ah, ah, my uh, Sephiroth figurine came and when oh, I was away. Sweet. And it's part of a uh, three-part set. You got Sephiroth, you've got Cloud, and you've got the big Yuna thing. It's just from a video game called Final Fantasy VII, mm -hmm. and it is a completely full, fully posable figure from. God, where did I get this from? I got it from Hobby Link Japan. And um, they've been out of stock for almost a year straight, and they finally had some loose stock in, and I was like, yoik, bye. Deanna, yeah, Deanna would love what it is. Uh, I don't think you have any of your favorite you, games. you got to show off what you got from me, the uh, Death Star. Oh, the round Death Star that's over here. Yeah, I know you've got that in reach. <laughs> Needs work, but... I may have had it in reach. Um, yeah, it's uh, one of the Micro Machines playsets, Death Stars. Oh, okay. And I plan on gluing it shut and everything, so it's never going to be a playset ever again. I just want always want I've always wanted a Death Star, and so this sucker is actually going to go up on my ceiling when she's finished. And uh, just because I've got a ringtone on my phone, which is um, <laughs> Alec Gu no, it's Alec Guinness saying that's no moon, just to play that to see this. Just for <laughs> Just to relive that moment of being on the bridge of the Millennium Falcon, you know? That's no moon, you know, sort of thing. Um, yeah, there's that, and I've almost, well, I was in the process of working on the Hoth diorama with the walker. Um, I've still got to do a little bit more touch-up on the weathering on it, and then it's going to go in a display case, and then it's going on eBay, because I have no room for it. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I would love to keep it, I have no room for it, because I actually have a Star Destroyer from uh, the MPC Star Destroyer, with the fiber optics, I actually have that on its way from eBay, and that's going to go up on the shelf when she's done underneath my Enterprise and my Klingon D7. I, you know, I just realized something. You just brought something up as, in fact, I was told to um, go up to my office, go to my model, models, and dust them off. And I, it turns out that I'm building dust collectors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't go there because I, I, I'm afraid if I ever take one of those turrets off one of those tanks and turn it upside down, a dust bunnies are just going to come falling right out. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, 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 I really do have to 
Well, it's See, funny that's the thing. because no, it's funny you say you pick them up and your dust bunnies will fall out. The way mm -hmm. I build models, gremlins will be falling out of them. <laughs> <laughs> we well, see talking about that is because I, I actually went to my local hardware store and bought some shelves, some shelving kits. You, know, you get the brackets and the shelf and whatnot. I just <laughs> haven't had the time to put them up. And I've got a funny feeling that after this call, my wife's going to remind me and say, you better put those shelves up. Because <laughs> <laughs> my What's living room... Back, you mentioned it. i, I got to throw it out there. One of these days, I'm going to go find, like, the... Uh, I know the AMC, a, you know, AMC company made that thing called the Gremlin, mm -hmm. the car. Right. Find oh. one and send it to you. That way you can actually have the Gremlin. The Gremlin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> but no, my living room is full of uh, boxes that was in my office that have model kits and stuff in that I told my wife I was going to put them on the shelf and I just haven't got around to doing it yet. But uh, I'm pretty sure after I'm done now, she's going to, you know, better put them up on the shelf or I'm throwing them away. No, my babies. Yeah. You know, um, what, uh, Danny, it's time for us to tell a story. And, <laughs> uh, you know... It's been it's been real joy. It's always a joy. Every other week, get to hang out with you guys, and uh, there's a lot of people watching these videos. And I really, I'm just astounded how much response over the past almost year that Amazing Plastic has received for um, doing what we do. Uh, we're just simply passionate. We like to play with toys, and I think that's what it's, what it's all about. Um, yeah, people like to watch us because we have fun, and we're. I'm, I can speak for myself. I'm pretty self-deprecating. Uh, self so once upon a time, there was a uh, place called Amazing Plastic. And uh, at this place called Amazing Plastic, all the modelers wanted to paint their models once they built them. And they used Vallejo Paint, one of our sponsors. Uh, Vallejo Paint, uh, you can find anywhere. You can find them on the Internet. You can find them at your favorite local hobby store. And uh, how did these modelers put the Vallejo paint on their modelers, Danny? They used the magical water Matea airbrushes. <laughs> <laughs> and how did they use them? Did they clean them? Did they use them with care? Um, no. But honestly, we, we really would like to thank our sponsors. And we're going to start <laughs> off with those Aztec these painting masks. I can't, I can't do it. Not with a straight face. You killed it! <laughs> You're damn right I did. <laughs> thank Lou's Aztec Dummy Painting Masks and the Fiber Optic Store, Antenna Controls, and again, Awada Matea Airbrushes and Vallejo Paints and all the other guys that I don't have on my Hobby list Rocks. right now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, PM Hobbycrafts as well. Thank you, PM Hobbycrafts, for, Hobby for sponsoring us uh, here at Amazing Plastic. We'd like to thank you. And uh, don't forget, guys, check out uh, our community for any for daily deals and coupon codes for any of those products. Right, right. And uh, without the, the viewers and without the participants and without the modelers, we wouldn't have the vibrant community that we do. And I'd like to thank you all uh, outmost, upmost, whatever most, uh, because without this, I, I just have a lot of fun with you guys. I have a lot I of fun with this one. One thing I've wanted to throw out there, though, don't be afraid to get a hold of one of us, add, join. Don't be afraid to come to us and say, I want to be part of your community. How do I join? Mm -hmm. Just join and, and build models. We'd love to have exactly. members. And don't, we do have, new and don't forget, all you new guys that are watching, we do have an introduce yourself section. If you just want to say, hi, my name is Bob and I'm a model holic, come <laughs> on in. You know, It's fine. We have a 12-step program. <laughs> and, and so uh, we, we can try and help you. We, we can try and help you. Cars, <laughs> monster trucks, you know. We, we tend to be firm believers in that there are no secrets. Yes. <laughs> run into so many uh, You know what? I, somehow I seem to know you guys better than the people that I work with. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, talking about about I'm talking about secrets when it comes to model building. Yeah. And because uh, so many times, you know, someone will build something, you go, oh, how did you do that? Oh, that's my secret. No, we'll yeah. tell you. You, you, you know, I, I can actually tell. I can actually tell you the biggest secret right now that we'll all agree to. Secret number one: read the instructions. Yes. <laughs> you know what? That's a start. Go ahead and share secret number two: don't ever set your model too close to a heat lamp. Yes. <laughs> oh, melt it. Space heater. <laughs> oh, space heater. Yeah. Go, yeah. no, Jack. Love you. And, and uh, well, whatever you do for the for the love of Jiminy Cricket, don't super glue yourself to yourself. 
Because it's really embarrassing going to the doctor and your hand is stuck to your face. I think we've all done that at least once. <laughs> well, you know, Otto, I can't be the pro modeler that you are because if I was a pro modeler like you, I would be bald. Yep. I terribly <laughs> I've now grown my hair. I've grown again and my hair don't grow no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids, uh, it's been real nice, uh, and thanks for watching, everyone, and thank you for joining. Thank you for building models. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you, uh, Christina, for showing up and uh, hearing every word we've said. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this is brought to you by Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Danny, thank you for filling in the blanks. So you're, you're good. You're just a talker. And Not a thank problem. You. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad everything back at home is doing uh, everybody's well. And it's, doing, it's doing well. That's all I've got to say. And uh, a quick something I want to say out there, guys. Don't be afraid to make something. Just because you see some of the stuff we build and you think you, you, you can't build it the same as us, you don't know until you try. So get out there and make something. You know, there's T-shirts out there that say, uh, make love, not war. Our motto is build a model, not make a war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, and of course, we got the paper guy. If you're not into plastic, but you're into paper or wood <laughs> or any other organic other medium, material, yeah. you know, you can yeah. like staple trash cans together and call it a model. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, James showed us it isn't about plastic, it's also about being creative, and uh, you know, you're the best. Yep. And of course, Jay, you are always uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, was once called, I was once called refreshing, and I'm certainly not sure what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> A tic tac is refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, you make your models look like they're right out of the box, even though most of it is scratch built, and uh, that that's what that's what I like to see about your stuff. And of course, Mike. Uh, your builds are just as important as everybody else's. And you know what really flips me up about the shot that I'm looking at right now is not just you sitting there, but you got a pegboard behind you so neatly organized. Mm hmm. Makes me want to throw up. I was going to say, <laughs> you're falling in love behind you. <laughs> you notice my desk, my workbench, I don't, you know, I just don't believe in piling stuff up in front of me. You know, I'm. 400 pounds, so I need a big space, you know, and if I bump something, I'm That's, done. But I'm just saying how neat you are because, look, uh, I'm going to shift the camera on me, and uh, look at that. Isn't that just a wonderful sight to see? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. So, and yeah, I mean. Nice. I'm not about to move right the camera to show my right now. <laughs> And uh, thanks, Otto, for passing by and stopping by and showing us your cars and everything else that you do. Thank you, Otto. Thank you, everyone, for um, watching. Y'all have a good night now. Take care. God bless. Good night. Keep on rocking. <laughs>